All right, uh, let's look at the homework 3.3, uh, problem number 10. All right, so we have uh, f prime of x is given, uh, which is uh, 16x squared minus 9. And for part A, find the open intervals on which f prime is increasing or decreasing. All right, so uh, let's do that. So since we're talking about increasing, decreasing, we have to look at its derivative. So we take the derivative uh, one more time here. So uh, we take the derivative with respect to x. So we have f uh, double prime uh, of x, right? So this is equal to, I right, multiply 2 times 16, so it's uh, 32 uh, x and derivative of negative 9 is 0, right? So we're going to set this guy equal to 0 so that uh, we know that uh, x is going to be, so divide through by 32, so x is going to be equal to 0, right? Then we can do a number line. So here we have a number line here, right? Then uh, I'm going to put a tick mark for 0, right? Then uh, we're going to look at the sign of uh, f double prime, right? All right, so I'm going to just uh, pick a, a random number uh, less than 0. So I'll try x equals uh, negative 1 and uh, before 0, so anything bigger than 0. So I'm going to just use 1, right? So if you type uh, plug in x equals negative 1 into 32x, so, so 32 times negative 1, so it's going to be a negative number. So I just indicate that by putting a negative sign there, right? And if you plug in positive 1, 32 times 1 is going to be definitely positive, right? So which tells us that uh, if you are looking at uh, f prime, right? This is going to be, so it's a uh, derivative is de uh, negative, so it's going to be decreasing here. And after that, this is going to be increasing there, right? So the increasing interval is going to be, uh, so it has to be open interval, so starting from 0 to positive infinity. And the decreasing is before 0, so it's going to be negative infinity to 0, right? So let's type it in. All right, so we have a uh, negative, uh, actually, what was it, the 0 to uh, infinity, right? And then we have a negative infinity to 0, right? Uh, let's check the answer. All right, uh, I came back, and it uh, looks like we got part A correctly, right? Let's look at part B. Find the open intervals on which the graph of f is concave upward and concave downward, right? So here, concave upward uh, means what uh, we know that the f double prime is going to be. So second derivative is positive, right? And if you're looking at the concave downward, then we're talking about the second derivative being negative, right? But uh, so uh, if you look at the sign chart, uh, so we know that uh, here uh, the second derivative is positive on uh, starting from zero. So here you have a zero to infinity, right? And the second derivative is negative uh, before zero. So it's actually exactly the same answer as part A. So uh, let's type that in there, All right? So we have uh, a zero to uh, infinity and then you have a negative um, uh, infinity to uh, zero All right let's check the answer all right it came back and uh, looks like uh, we got part b correctly as well all right let's do part c find the x values of the relative extrema of f All right so uh, let's do that all right, to find the uh, relative extrema, we have to find a critical number. So what we do is we're going to look at the, um, the first derivative. So we look at the first derivative, which was uh, given to be uh, 16x squared minus 9, right? 
So I'm going to set that equal to zero to find the critical number. So uh, first thing I would do is I'm going to send negative nine over to the other side. So we can just add a nine to both sides to achieve that. So you have a 16 uh, x squared is equal to nine, right? Then uh, we can divide through by 16 to get uh, x squared is equal to 9 over 16. Right? Then uh, we can uh, take the square root of both sides, and you have x is equal to uh, plus or minus. Right? Square root of 9 over 16. So square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. Right? So we got that. Right? So we're going to have, let's see, critical numbers are, so these are critical numbers. Right? Uh, we have a, a positive 3 quarters and a negative 3 quarters. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the uh, second derivative test because we already know the second derivative. So here, if you look at the f double prime, so let's look at the uh, a positive 3 quarter. Right? And uh, f double prime is 32x, so you have a 32, and you plug in 3 quarter for x. And uh, we don't really have to know the number, we just know that it's positive, right? So if the second derivative is positive, right, then which means that uh, you're looking at the, uh, you know, curving up graph, and then you're looking at the, at the bottom of the valley, right? So we know that uh, it's going to be, this is going to give you a local uh, minimum. So you have a local minimum, right? So a relative minimum, so it's going to uh, occur at the positive 3 quarters, right? Then if you look at the F double prime of uh, negative uh, 3 quarters, right? So this is going to be, of course, 32 times negative 3 quarters but we just know that it's negative, right? So which means that the uh, right, second derivative is negative, means that uh, you're looking at uh, the top of the hill, right? So it's going to be a local maximum, right? So we just put the negative 3 quarter, right? So uh, let's uh, type it in. All right, so for maximum uh, occurs at x equals negative 3 quarters, and uh, relative minimum occurs at uh, positive 3 quarters. All right, let's check the answer. All right, uh, I came back and uh, looks like we got part C correctly. All right, so let's do part D. All right, so we want, actually, this is the second part of part C. Find the x value of uh, uh, values of the inflection points. All right, so let's go back and uh, look. All right, so here, if you know, let's look at the number, uh, you know, sign chart here. If the second derivative is negative, means that the original function is concave downward. And if the second derivative is positive, original function is concave upward, right? So that happens uh, at zero. So we know that uh, there's a concavity change there. So at zero, you're going to have an uh, inflection point, right? So answer here is going to be zero, right? So let's type it in. All right, we have zero, right? Let's check the answer. All right, uh, I came back, and it uh, looks like we got this one correctly as well. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.